Hello. In this problem, we have the following situation. We have a mass over here of mass M, and there's a rope attached to it that goes over a pulley. And this rope is attached to another mass, capital M, let's call it and capital M is two kilograms. The angle over here is 20 degrees. So let's say theta, 20 degrees. And so in this uh, figure, you can see uh, the block of mass M resting on the uh, 20 degree angle slope. The block has coefficient of uh, friction, static friction, 0 0.80, and kinetic friction, 0 0.50 with the surface. It is connected, as I mentioned, via a massless string over, and it goes over a massless frictionless pulley. And there's a hanging block with mass two kilograms. What is the minimum mass that will stick and not slip? And a second question is, if this minimum mass is not ever so slightly, it will start being pulled up the incline. What is the acceleration that it will have? All right, so we wanna know uh, the minimum mass that will keep the thing without moving, the whole system without moving. So remember that this uh, rope is only changing you know, the direction of the force. It's not doing uh, much more. This is kind of a one dimensional problem, but we do have uh, two bodies. So we have um, a free body diagram and an equation of motion for each one of them. So for this first one, the small mass, we have the tension in this direction. And then we we're going to have a friction. And we know it's to the left because this tension is pulling it to the right or trying to pull it. And initially this is not moving. I mean, we are interested in the case in which it is not moving. So that is, uh, it is, is a static friction. Um, this is actually at an angle. So we should have done that before. So friction, tension, the weight, is pulling straight down, it's gravity. And then there's the normal normal force, so orthogonal force produced by the surface. And this angle is gonna be 20 degrees. So we can switch it back to make things a little bit more clear. So we have um, tension in this direction weight in this direction, the normal in this direction, and friction in this direction. So we have a good number of forces. Let's call these um, small m. And then uh, large m is simpler. We just have tension going up and weight pulling down. And that's it, this should be capital MG. Okay, so we have our free body diagrams. We can translate directly to the, um, um, the equations of motions. We 
it's motion with uh, Newton's laws. So let's do this one first, sum of forces, small m, in the x direction, we have minus friction, static friction, minus mg, but only a component of it. Um, if this angle is 20 degrees, then we're looking at the sine. So mg sine theta. And uh, this is the tension. Forgot to name it. And that's in the positive direction. That is mass times acceleration of the small m in x. Um, we do not want these to move at all, but I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave the A in there for the time being, because we might want to use it for the second part. But we know that the, for the first part of the problem, it is zero. So sum of forces of little m, in the y direction, we have um, minus mg cosine theta. Um, sorry, sine theta. Wait. Um, oh, yes, this is vertical, so cosine theta. And plus the normal. And that is mass times acceleration of small m in y, that one is always going to be zero. It's not going up or down. So I'm going to say that this is zero. And that is useful because um, this friction is mu static times the normal. So we need to know the normal. The normal is, uh, this one is negative. It goes on the other side positive mg cosine theta. And so this term over here, you now we can replace it. Minus mu static times the normal. The normal is that, so minus mu static mg cosine theta. And this is again the sum of forces on small m in the x direction. All right, good. And now we have another one, um, another equation, which is for big M. So sum of forces on big M in the y direction is the weight minus big M G plus the tension. And that is equal to mass times acceleration of big M in Y. So uh, we actually have one more equation, which is the the acceleration constraint. So if this one moves in the negative direction, so acceleration of big M, Y in the negative direction, then this M, 
the small one in X is positive, right? This one moves down, this one moves to the right. So it's positive. All right. Um, we can just say that, that is equal to A. So I'm going to keep this one over here, A. And now this one is minus A. So it's minus big M times acceleration. Good. So um, we have several options. So uh, we know mu. We know we're looking for, this is what we're looking for, small m. We know g, we know cosine theta. We're looking for this little m. We know g, we know sine theta. This tension, we don't quite know it. But uh, we have an equation here for that one. So we have two unknowns, small m and tension, and two uh, equations. So you know, we can solve for t, it might be the easiest way. So tension is minus m a plus m G. This is big M. So we can factorize it so that it looks nicer. We can say M G minus A. Okay, so we don't need this equation anymore. Um, we got the normal from there. But um, we can get rid of it and I'm going to put it over here. Tension is M. G minus A. So then we don't need this one uh, anymore. And we can just substitute the T over here in this other equation. So we have minus mu S M G cosine theta minus mg sine theta plus m g minus a that equals m a right so we're looking for this m so we can put everything that in which it is a factor on one side so let's say M minus mu static G cosine theta minus G sine theta. And then uh, this one we can put on this side minus A, right? So actually, let's make this negative so that we can make this one positive and this one positive. Okay. And uh, this one, you know, the big M, we move it to the other side. It's positive here, so negative M G minus A. And now we have a negative here and a negative here, so we can cancel them. And so now the mass, is going to be um, this one. So M G minus A divided by mu S G cosine theta plus G sine theta plus 
A. So this is the, the general equation. But remember that this is not actually moving. It's just about your, we might want to touch it and it will start moving. But it's not actually moving. So this acceleration is zero. So then this is negative here. We can get rid of it and get rid of this one too. Right? And so this is just mg. Right? And these are all quantities that we know. So the mass is going to be, put it down here. The two kilograms, actually, um, we have G up here and G and G here. So we can factorize the G. And now we can get rid of that G. This is even prettier, right? So it's just a mass divided by this. So you said two kilograms. And mu static is 0 0.8. Uh, cosine 20 degrees. is 0.9396, so times 0 0.8 is 7.5, I mean, um, not times 8, times 0 0.8, 0 0.75, and then sine of 20 is uh, 0 0.34. So adding these two together, it's um, 1.09. And so we divide two kilograms by that, we get um, 1.82. And the units, kilograms. So for the second part, they ask us what acceleration will it have if it starts um, just moving, just barely moving. So the equations uh, remain the same, but these mu s, mu static, is going to become mu kinetic. And so, uh, these free body diagrams are going to look the same. And now we know what that mass is. And so uh, we can just, so I'm going to get rid of this part. I guess I didn't want to get rid of the tension. I think it was this one. All right, so tension was... Mm. mass, this is positive, this one is negative. 
and this one is positive. Okay, so M G minus A. Yeah, should not have erased that one. Um, but now we can put it in here. So it's going to be the new one. It's going to be minus mu kinetic mg cosine theta. And minus mg sine theta. And then the tension is this one. So plus big M g minus a equals ma. All right. So we know everything. We know the little mass is 1.82. We know the big mass, we know acceleration due to gravity, uh, we know mu k is given 0 0.5. What we want to know is the acceleration of the system. And so let's expand this one. Uh, so plus mg minus ma. We can move this one to the other side. So I'm gonna write it again. Mu k mg cosine theta mg sine theta plus mg equals m a small m minus m a big m. So this one, we can factorize it. It's going to be A, um, small m minus big M. Uh, sorry. Um, this will be minus, this one is positive, so plus. Yes, plus. And over here, uh, we can factorize the G will be the easiest one just so that it looks a little nicer. So I'm gonna put a um, minus G over here. So this one is mu K. Mg cosine theta plus M, sorry, not G, just M. Uh, M sine theta minus big M. Yeah, the units are kilograms, all of them. That's A. And then the sum of the two masses. So, the acceleration, which is what we're looking for, is going to be this divided by m plus m, the sum of the masses. Good. And I guess we can delete this one, previous problem. Well, the previous part of the problem. Remember that the mass of the little one is 1.82. Okay, so the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared times, is mu k is 0 0.5. 
um, little m is 1.82. And I'm not going to write the 1.82. I'm going to multiply it. Actually, I'm going to just put this whole term over here. So it's 0.5 times 1.82 times cosine of 20 degrees. So that one is 0 0.855. And then that one is 1.82 times sine of 20 degrees. So that one is 0 0.622. And then uh, this big M was two kilograms. Uh, so this is in kilograms. This one is also in kilograms. This one is also in kilograms. And then divide it by 1.82 plus two, so this is 3.82 kilograms. All the kilograms go away. You have kilograms on top, kilograms on bottom. So we can remove the units. And so the units are going to be, well, the units here, the units are gonna be meters per second squared, which is a unit of acceleration as we expected. So this is gonna be, you know, 0.85, well, 0.855 plus 0.62 minus two. Um, so this term over here is negative. 0 0.52, and then we divide that by 3.82. That's uh, 0.136, the whole thing, negative. And so 9.8 times 0.136, um, it's 1.34. Negative and negative becomes positive. So the acceleration is 1.34 meters per second squared in the positive direction as you expect. So, a relatively long problem, but it is straightforward. You know, it's just from your pictorial representation to your free body diagrams, the equations of motion, uh, the you know, Newton's second law follow directly from your, from your free body diagrams. And then it's just algebra, it's um, a system of equations. Initially, we had two variables, little m and t, and we had um, several equations. Uh, we also had the, the acceleration constraint, which allowed us to put the appropriate uh, sign over here. And yep, yeah, then uh, you nudge these object, uh, these box a little bit. Uh, the friction kicks, the uh, kinetic friction kicks in because the static cannot support it anymore. And so it starts moving, but we already knew the mass. The equations of motion remain the same. So we didn't have to do that again. Um, we just had to solve for the A uh, in that other case. So yep, this is a pretty typical uh, pulleys and forces problem. So I hope that you liked it. Thank you. <laughs>